to BHD here. And inside this kind of huge box is possibly the most hyped piece of tech of this entire year. And that is a PlayStation 5. So this video is a look at the final retail packaging for this console. So some of you might know I've been testing a preview Xbox Series X. This is final. This is what people who pay for it are gonna get. Now we get to take a closer look. So right off the bat on the front here, you see the console, you see the controller. Looks like this is the version with the optical drive, so good to know. And it does say 8K or 4K 120 or HDR, but there's more on the back. And we're basically getting now the whole console sideways, which I think I'm gonna end up having mine sideways, we'll see. It says 825 gigs up here, good to know. I think we might as well open it now. So let's see. So at the top here, there's a little cardboard box. Let's see it. This is the styrofoam. This is a big, this is a big console. Ooh, that is pretty nice actually, but it is huge. Dang. That is the PlayStation 5. That is a tall, but also kind of nice console. Yeah, yeah. Only so yeah, I do like this build. Uh, my original reaction to seeing the unveiling video was more strong. I think I called it like an alien spaceship in my first impression, something like that. But seeing it in person, I do kind of like it now. But by the way, so in the cardboard box, just to finish off the unboxing, you've got the power cable to plug it straight into the wall, no brick. You've got one new DualSense wireless controller, which we'll get to. You got your paperwork, safety guide, quick start guide, your classics, and then you get an HDMI cable, and then there's this mystery plastic thing, which is actually the dock needed to sit the PS5 flat on its side. Because without the dock, the PS5, it just doesn't have flat sides, so it doesn't really sit totally flat. So in any of the media you see with the PS5 sitting on the side, you always see this little black dock underneath it. That's this thing. So don't throw this out. It attaches if you want it. You can you know, hide it away if you don't, but you'll probably wanna have this around if you ever switch to it sideways someday. So, all right, finally seeing the PS5 in person, a couple things strike me. The size is number one still, it is gigantic, but also the textures. It's a matte finish again on the white outside part, and then the inside is very glossy, as you can see with the reflections. And actually, if you look closely, really closely, at the texture on the inside of the PS5, you can see it's actually made up of a bunch of tiny X's, O's, squares, and triangles, which is super cool. They're extremely small and embossed in this seemingly random pattern, but that is super cool. Uh, you can see all the ports on the back with the heat sink around it, power at the bottom, one HDMI, ethernet, and two USB, and then all the way up at the top is a Kensington lock. Then at the front is your full-size USB, your USB Type-C, and then at the bottom, the disc eject button and the power button. So with that disc drive you have on the side for your physical games, you do get eject button still. And for the digital only version, I guess you just won't have that eject button and the side will be blank, just covered up there, no disk drive. And yeah, you can see it's it's not a pointlessly complex design. A lot of what you're looking at up front is heat sinks, a lot of thermal management, it's a lot of cooling off those insides. Size comparison time. PS4 Pro, it's got a D-brand skin on it, but this is the size of the console that I've been using. It's definitely slimmer. And just this monolith, oh, it's heavier too. The PS5 is heavy. Uh, and it's definitely gonna be taller, wider. It's bigger in every dimension and it's heavier. And I guess it really depends on what underneath your TV looks like about whether this height difference will matter to you or not. But that height difference is real. If you're putting it underneath something that didn't have enough clearance before, airflow will be even more restricted <laughs> because of the size of this thing. Xbox Series X. This one's an even more impressive difference here. I mean, the PlayStation just kind of dwarfs it 
at this point. And I don't know if that's an efficiency thing. I don't know if you're putting it next to your TV, you might not care so much about that, but as far as just the footprint, the sheer footprint of the PS5, I think we're really seeing now how massive this thing is. Kind of looks like a like a fancy building. Like a really cool architected I don't know what building I'm thinking of, but it kind of it kind of looks like a building. But of course, there's more to the PS5 than just the console itself. There is also all the accessories. Let's get into those. So inside this box, you'll have a DualSense wireless controller if you get one separately. So it is white. So again, with the Stormtrooper white color scheme with blue accents, and you'll notice that theme sticks through literally everything here. So as I struggle my way through the unboxing and get to the controller, the first impression of it is also really nice. I am a big fan of this controller. Now the PS4 controller to me was fine, but I actually like the Xbox Elite controller more because it's a little bigger in my hands, it fits well, it just feels higher quality. So I was hoping actually for a bigger, more solid PS5 controller. And that's exactly what we got. It's more comfortable. The stems are a little bit longer. It's a little bigger, but it is still really lightweight. So that hasn't changed. But to me, yeah, this controller is a pretty huge win. You can see the layout is basically exactly the same. Triangle, square, circle, X on the right, arrows on the left, trackpad in between, dual joysticks. And then around the back, there's no removable back anymore. It's just a built-in rechargeable 1500 milliamp hour battery and the port to charge is thankfully USB type C. Now I'm excited to test this controller's haptic feedback and new improved triggers and the responsiveness and all that stuff. But as you could probably tell already, the embargo for today's video is just unboxing and hardware. So I can't show that yet. But uh, yeah, for now the triggers are a little more firm. But anyway, a couple other things you might notice. The microphone's still at the bottom here. There's still the speaker and the PlayStation button. But now there's no more LED light on the back of the controller. That was like a staple of that controller. Instead, the light is behind the trackpad now. And at the bottom here, underneath the light, you'll notice some pins on either side of the headphone jack. And that's for the docked charging. But we'll get more into charging in a second. But again, by far the coolest part of the design of this controller is the texture on the back. And it's again made up of those tiny little little shapes. It's subtle, but you can see the embossed X's and O's and squares and triangles. This is something you might honestly never notice if you were never really taking a super close look at the controller, but it is there and it's giving you grip. That is a nice touch. Sony also made a DualSense charging station to charge two controllers at once, which is very smart. I've never actually had any sort of dock for my controllers. So for me, they always just kind of sit around next to the console plugged in via USB to charge. But I think for two controllers, I'm probably gonna wanna get this thing. It comes with the dock itself and then a pretty long power cable and brick, which plugs into the bottom. The controller lines up the pins at the bottom with the pins on the charger and it just pops right on. And it faces upright so you can see the charging LED color behind the trackpad to know if you're done charging or not. It's great. Uh, I kind of wish the dock was a little heavier though. Like it would feel higher quality if it was a more solid base and I could just slam the controller in there. But the rest is great. You're freeing up USB ports on the front of the console, and if you can spare another wall outlet for this charger, seems like a good buy. Also, the click-in is very satisfying. Oh, they should have done magnets, though. That would have actually been kind of sick if they had MagSafe technology in the PS5 dock. You could just drop it in there and it would line up on its own, but I don't know, maybe next time. Okay, real quick, let's also take a look at the new headphones and the camera. So the new Pulse 3D wireless headset here is pretty distinct. This is a design that looks to be like super minimal. It's this white and black headset for the PlayStation that'll do 3D audio with certain games that support it. So they drop dual microphones in here for better audio quality and noise cancellation, and they promise a 12 hour battery life. Getting them out the box, the headphones themselves, they look crazy. They look pretty massive and very unique looking. So they look like someone was challenged with the design to make the ultimate you know, modern, minimal pair of headphones. And they came up with this. Now it does have USB-C charging, great. Has a three and a half millimeter headphone jack to plug straight into the controller and a USB dongle to connect wirelessly to the console or pretty much anything else. But yeah, the headphones. The material here is almost entirely plastic again, which is fine, but they also have this unique dual band design where the bottom is this sliding rubber band for fit, sits on your head, the ear cushions are super thick and soft and comfortable, and the whole package is pretty lightweight, so that's nice. USB-C charging, 
microphone mute button, all the controls are at the bottom, including the sliding power and the LED indicator. It's all in the left ear cup. It's really sleek and pretty cool, but I don't know. I just, I feel like I'm not gonna use these no matter how nice they make them, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe, do you guys use the Sony PlayStation headphones or do you use third-party headphones or just use the speakers on your TV? I'm kind of curious what that ratio is like. Maybe let me know in the comment section below. So these are cool, but I probably won't use them. Then last but not least, the HD camera. This will probably be the least purchased official first party accessory, but let's be honest, for people streaming their games, this is probably gonna be the camera to buy that integrates with the whole system and of course matches the whole aesthetic. It's a 1080p camera. It's got a built-in white stand that lets you adjust the angle. So if you put it below the TV, you can point it up. And if you put it above the TV, you can point it down. But yeah, there you have it. Those are all the accessories. That is the PlayStation 5 console. Just a first look and unboxing of the hardware. Conveniently, thanks to the embargo, that is all I am allowed to show you in this video today. But you guys already know, as soon as I'm turning the camera off, I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in and fire it up and start playing some games. I mean, testing. I wanna be testing the PS5 over the next couple of weeks. Along with the systems that are all here, it's Techtober, there's a lot going on. Make sure you're subscribed to see the full review if you haven't already. And that's about it. Thanks for watching. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.